Superman Super Sight, and a guest here you might recognize to my left is Mr. Mark Pillow, who played Nuclear Man in Superman 4. Great to see you again, Mark. Pleasure to see you again. He's a guest here at the uh, 46th Annual Superman Celebration here in Metropolis, Illinois, and uh, going to be here all three days throughout the weekend, so uh, if you're heading this way, be sure to stop by and uh, see Mark, and uh, he'll be happy to talk to you about anything and everything related to Superman. Is uh, well, some other projects you did as well. I um, wanted to kind of touch on those. You sure. did the Alaska Kid. Mm -hmm. um, what was all involved with that that series? That was a big co-production that we did in uh, Poland and Russia and Czechoslovakia. And it was British director. Cast was mainly American. And then the money was Moss Film in Russia. And it was based on one of Jack London's books okay. called Smoke Blue. It was a short story okay. based on a reporter who goes to the Klondike uh, around 1900 so we just kind of built a series around that so that was an incredible experience because that was a year and a half of six days a week working in okay. all kinds of weather and uh with an oscar winning director who i learned a lot from and a great cast who was the director james hill oh, okay okay he was known for doing um all oh, the lines born free okay and the but he won a, an oscar for a film short that he did but had done uh, all kinds of British series, it, and he had been around for years and new film, and had been a actually interesting thing about him is he was in the in the camp where the Great Escape that movie was based upon. Oh, and oh, the character wow. of the fixer Donald Pleasance played mm -hmm. making it was based on James Hill. Oh, so okay. he remembers all that time and the way things were. So fascinating stories so this man I, I mean god just turned him on and just talked about the world and world <laughs> war ii and right yes good film so that talking about film overseas russia poland that's why i met my wife um i had a fantastic experience i learned a lot okay okay and how long did that series last for um it, it was 13 episodes it took us a, a year and a half to do it and then they they cut a film out of it as well okay stayed in europe film didn't make it out of it they, I don't know if they tried to sell it much out of Europe, but uh, I think it did pretty well. Yeah, I've tried finding like footage of it online. There's like clips here and there, and there's some uh, there's some uh, photos. There, there's there's one great one of you, like where you've got like the full, mm -hmm. like almost like a mullet going on mm -hmm. type thing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I figured I'd go, you know, go back to using the mullet. It worked well. Right. Made it safe, so. <laughs> now, um, of course, Superman four. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much. To talk about with that, but I know our time's limited. So, um, for the role of Nuclear Man, what did that process and in, in regard to uh, actually landing that role, what was the process of going through that? Well, I heard I was actually in Denver working, and um, they came in to pay us for doing this, this theater thing. And the guy said, "Hey, your agent's been trying to find you." And again, I just disappeared. I'm off doing something. Right. And said, "I need you on a plane tomorrow back to LA to meet." go to Canon. And actually I was kind of away from the business for a while. So I didn't know this casting was going on. I wasn't part of all that. Um, but flew out to LA, met with Sydney Fury and the Canon people and just hit it off wonderfully right away. I mean, went, Sydney said, that's who I want right there. Oh, cool. And said, be back here in two hours, let's go have lunch. So I just got my car. I think I drove to the coast in a days and just right. around and came back again <laughs> because it was all happening so quickly. Right. And here, I, you know, the day before, I'm just doing my thing and all of a sudden we're talking about doing Superman 4 and we're, where is it? We're going to London. They're going to get fitted and da, da, da. So, uh, like, like everything in this world, you almost have to be ready for whatever's coming your way all mm -hmm. the time because you never know. Right. So just be prepared to go and say yes to things. Right. And that's a big thing to me lately is being just go yes. It's fun. Gotcha. gotcha. Cool. Um, the uh, original uh, script for the movie, uh, and there, there's the footage that's out there, had uh, the first Nuclear Man mm -hmm. that was uh, Clive Mammel. Yes. Um, I've actually seen recently that he was in the first season of uh, Game of Thrones. Yes. Um, and uh, the version that he had on the character was almost kind of like a bizarro mm -hmm. uh, type version of, um, of Superman that's loosely based. Uh, did y'all actually work together or run into each other at all on the set, or was his part completely done when you completely came in? Completely done before I started. Okay. So I saw him once when, thank goodness we met, he came out to the set of Lex's Lair, we got a picture together, had a chance to speak, but 
I didn't see him again, and he wasn't at the premiere. Because I mean, I didn't know what the film was going to be when it was finally released. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was odd, and I'm sure for him as well. Right. Disappointing. Yeah, definitely. The, yeah. the clips I've seen him work, he's just fantastic. Yeah, there's the whole fight scene that he has with uh, with Chris mm -hmm. uh, in the back alley and everything. But uh, um, but what's cool about Clive is, uh, well, he's actually no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Come on out, <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when the movie was actually uh, released, the final cut of the film, obviously uh, notorious that Canon reduced the budget. Mm -hmm. So was it kind of expected what? the final version of the film was going to be, or was that something that you saw the first time when it was released pretty much to everyone else? That's everything, yes. I had no idea. So seeing it for the first time, and of course, it jumped to me pretty quickly and go, well, what happened to, to Nuclear Man number one? So mm -hmm. that was the first time I knew anything about the cut of the film, um, and, a, and a bit of a surprise, yes. Right. So, and... Uh, Gosh, I was, I've, I've never seen a, the uncut version, the full version, so I don't know what it actually looks like. Uh, but it, it was certainly fun to have him in that film. Right. Every few, every few years of when they release like a new box set edition, they'll kind of put a little bit more of Superman 4 in there mm -hmm. with, with the footage of Clive and everything. Uh, the most recent one that they released last year for the, uh, the 85th anniversary when they did the, the new box set. It's got even a little bit more of that footage in there. So, uh, yeah, it'd definitely be something you want to check out because it's, yeah. it's got quite a bit of him in there. Mm. So. Um, now, working with people like Gene and Chris, what was that whole experience like? Oh, wonderful. Uh, Chris, uh, fantastic. I mean, most of the time I saw him, we were on the set. Gene, I've had lunch with several times, and Chris a few times as well. Gene Hackman is as wonderful as you would imagine, and is, the stories are incredible, and he's just as professional as they get. I mean, you get to the set, he's already been there for an hour. Oh, really? <laughs> thinking about what he's doing, walking through. Um, it's amazing to think, how, you wonder about what these people are like in real life, and they're pretty much what you expect them to be. They're just as kind, just as articulate, just as giving, just as open to, to, to your thoughts and suggestions and to give advice. Just a wonderful time with both. That's great to hear because mm -hmm. sometimes it's such a facade, but that's mm -hmm. great to hear that both of them are that, that way. All yes. the cameras, they are on camera. Mm -hmm. So, And I know for uh, the dialogue that Gene actually did the dialogue and then you had to mouth to what he had already recorded. Is that, yes. is that right? Yes. I, which is an odd way to do it. Yes, yeah, like so. You're, you're trying to lip sync to something as opposed to normal. Usually if you're going to use different, you know, you'd use my voice and then you bring him in. But I... I think they will. We've got Gene here, and we want this character to sound like Lex, so we need to go ahead and just do a wild track of, of Gene doing the lines. But it made it challenging to do because it was a good playback, and sometimes you can see that the little bit of a wooden look on my face. Thank goodness it, it fit Nuclear Man, <laughs> right. but it was listening to the timing of trying to get these to match the lines as opposed to just giving them organically and then having them right. read up later. I got you. And then I know uh, we had talked about this all those years ago in that original phone interview. Uh, mm -hmm. John Cryer being a, an interesting individual to work with on set. Fantastic. <laughs> what a funny guy. <laughs> Jerry and I would just uh, say that next time we're in LA, got to invite him out to, to dinner. Right. It'd be fun to see him again. And he hasn't aged. That's no, the other he thing. It's the like, same. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like he could still play Ducky mm -hmm. if he wanted to now. And then, uh, and then where they they got him to to play Lex. Yeah, uh, on, yeah, on television yeah, was yeah. pretty cool to go back. He's like just that. very, very, very light and fun and enjoys what he does and, and very good at what he does. And look, look at his career. Oh, yeah. Since then, my lord. Right. So, uh, yeah, that was a great experience. Now, with him, I got to spend a lot of time. A lot of times we we drive in to the set and back at the okay. end of the day. So a lot of times it's just to converse. And I mean, my mouth was hurting from laughing so much. With that guy. <laughs> I can imagine so, really. <laughs> Nuclear dude. So you call me Nuclear, Nuclear dude. dude. <laughs> And uh, one other, last thing I wanted to touch on was uh, there's the British premiere mm -hmm. where uh, you were in costume. Mm -hmm. And what's the whole story behind that? That happened very <laughs> quickly. I, I had a tuxedo to that event. And um, I could, two days before, the, the Canon people said, gosh, we want to make some kind of an event out of it. They even thought about flying Chris in or something like mm -hmm. that in Leicester Square. Right. So they asked me to put on, so we had to, they had to dig it out, 
and I didn't, wasn't expecting to be wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in retrospect, you know, uh, it was a, a little uncomfortable to have that on. I'd imagine. I must say. Yeah. Um, but it was. It certainly drew the, the the photographers, which was, I think, part of the reason about just the showmanship of the of Menachem and um, the Canon people. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was a very quick decision that they made and asked me, and then I just went, yes, okay. <laughs> right. I put it on. And, right. Uh, yeah, but it was interesting to sit in the theater with that Spanish yes, song with yeah. Princess Diana, like right here. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the, that that photo, you know, where you're meeting the royals, and yeah. uh, and then I saw there's another one where you're actually getting out of the cab uh, right yes. there. This, yeah, yes. and you've got like this big grin on your face. So I can just imagine I was going through your head. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. That was an interesting choice, I must say. <laughs> right. I'm not sure if I'd be as game now for that type of choice. I understand. But then it's like okay. I understand. I got you. Um, nowadays, uh, you actually are in the wine business. Mm-hmm. Uh, you tell me a little bit uh, about what all. Yeah, I, I work for a distributor, and I represent a lot of different portfolios. And I generally take around the South Texas area, Houston, mm-hmm. Whole Foods. Just my job mostly is a educator and a consultant. So teaching people about wine, telling the stories, selling. But I've been doing it for seventeen years now, and I've seen the transitions of company and, and the portfolios that we have and mm-hmm. it's been interesting because it's um, it, it's the wine business so it just it, it survives downturn of 08 and COVID and all the things that have happened right. so it's been a very steady thing for me I've enjoyed it you can never learn enough about it and about the world of wine and people love you bring up the subject and people want to talk about it there's right. something interesting about wine but it's been a good ride I'm still doing it Mm-hmm. Still full time. Awesome. Doing that. Okay. So I'll be back again on Monday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And I know I uh, see you doing a lot of the conventions now uh, with Jay. Uh, what's that like meeting the fans and everything? Oh, yeah. fantastic. And telling the stories, reliving the stories. Right. And the people that, 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 that was their childhood. And Jay, the same way, thinking, wow, somebody from the original Superman films, right. somebody that knew Chris and worked with Chris. Mm-hmm. This is like three times a year doing conventions. It's been so much fun. I can imagine. And a lot of the uh, ones that you do through uh, Cape Wonder and through with Jay and everything is uh, all the other cast members from some of the other movies mm-hmm. that, that all of y'all are there together. Yes. So. Jack O'Halloran, Sarah Douglas is there. I mean, right. Uh, Jeff East was at one of them. So it was great getting back with all. So for me, this is the first time I've met any of mm-hmm. this, this group. And they're fantastic. We have so much fun together. I saw a recent one. Uh, you were uh, there with Mariel. With Mary, so, oh, so, of course. So yes, that was a nice yes. reunion for you. Yes, it was. Yes, yes. Yes. And you can grab her and take off into the stratosphere <laughs> and leave her floating in space. <laughs> I asked and she uh, sadly refused. I, I understand. understand. I got you. I got you. Well, it was great talking to you Thank again, you. Mark. Um, I appreciate you taking time for the interview and everything. But, Thank you, Neil. Um, and, uh, I mean, looking at you now, they, they need to reach out to you like they have everybody else and have you be in one of the... The Superman things. I mean, I know the the series Superman and Lois is getting ready to wrap, but we got the new movie next year. Yes. And and Man of Steel, they had Aaron in it. Yeah. Smolensky, uh is a cameo. I mean, they've got to reach out to. I would love to do a cameo. I mean, Just have you walk by the camera or sitting at a coffee table. There Some you go. Exactly. Out. I mean, <laughs> if you do it, I mean, what do you think this happened? I, phew, uh, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I've got some contacts. But I don't know if they're that. High, but, yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and I've been away from it so long as well. <laughs> right. It would be fun. I must. It would be oh, fun. yeah, absolutely. Because uh, also, who was it? It was uh, Mark McClure. I mean, he was mm-hmm. in um, in uh, the recent Cavill movies, too. So it was, it was a police officer. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. They need to reach out to you. Yes. So if Warner sees this, reach out to Mark. Come Please. on. Please. It'll be fun. <laughs> I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> well, again, Mark, Thank great you, talking to you. Um, it fun, Neil. Hope you enjoyed the celebration this weekend. And, like I said, uh, anybody heading out this weekend, uh, be sure to stop by and, and see Mark. But thanks again. Thank you.